Welcome to Witch Hat Chats. Come on in and sit for our spell. We are sponsored by Ever Moving We Rise, Moonlight Potions and Charms, and Saul Ravencraft, Wizard for Hire. I am your goddess host, Miss Nikki Kirby, and our co-host somewhere around here happens to be Saul Ravencraft. How are you doing, Saul? I'm doing great, Nikki. Glad to see you. Yes, yes, it is so glad to see you. It is cold today. Oh uh, yeah, not cold here. It's uh it's warmish here. Uh we have we're running at uh oh well it's not telling me. Um but it's it's not cold. I know that. <laughs> Well, it's 56 degrees and it's getting, and it's just getting a little bit warm, but it is still that wind is making it cold here. I mean, I right. long sleeves <laughs> and you know me, I don't wear long sleeves. So sure. <laughs> ah, so what's you up to Saul? Well, just finished a, a lot of activity um, as we record this. I've got uh, Ravencrest Vault of Horror tonight at the drive-in. Uh, this last weekend was the first ever un-Halloween celebration event, uh, which uh, was a lot. There was there was a lot going on there, and um, you know, whenever you you run an event, you're mostly making the event go, and so while you are gratified at what went on and you like to see people enjoying it uh you don't really get to enjoy the event because yeah. you're you're just constantly figuring stuff out and and uh, so while i was very excited for what we did i was just all beat up and burnt up uh at the end of it and i'm i'm still in that mode uh you know we're coming out of a season we're coming into thanksgiving things are starting to slow down socially uh and you know the, the the rest of the world is starting to slow down um we're looking towards some transformations coming up uh and i've already been hit by uh by some of the the attitude that, that thinks that they are entitled to uh uh to be impolite uh about things uh and that's uh, that's going to be something to address moving forward as people get emboldened um so yeah i'm i'm in kind of a weird space right now uh, there will be some santa gigs to uh enjoy in december uh, but right now I just, I feel kind of used up to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I see your beard is getting longer though. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's maintained. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm not going to, not going to let it go totally crazy. We're not going to get all Gandalf with it, but, uh, I've, uh, found for me that, uh, if I if I trim it down, even though there are Santas with trimmed beards, for me it just it works theatrically. It it seems to work right uh, longer. And uh, you know, I tell you, if if uh, Santa was not a money making venture, 
uh, it uh, uh, this this thing would trim back quite a bit <laughs> because it's kind of a pain to deal with. Um, but that's all right. That's all right. And some people say that they prefer me like this, and so that confuses me because I don't I don't really see myself most of the time. So I I can't tell what looks good. Uh, but some people say they like this and they would be disappointed if I if I changed it. So I don't know. I'm going with the flow. That's what I'm doing. I'm going with the flow. Well, I look at it this way. Whatever makes you happy because you're the one that has to wear it. Yeah. I look at it. I wish it were more obvious what made me happy. <laughs> All right. So what is our divination? Well, um, our divination for today is to accept who you are in this moment, but acknowledge who you want to become. Ooh. That's deep. Well, it is. And I don't know. One of the things that, that I, I, I like the sentiment about this, but one of the things that I don't like is this idea that we're always supposed to be moving toward this idealized, perfect version of ourself. Um. I know that there are some perspectives where that makes sense, but as I have matured, this idea of becoming successful, becoming the, the, the peak of everything I am and everything I can do just seems so elusive. Um, and a lot of it is because I'm driven by my curiosity Right, I'm interested in a lot of stuff. I like to try things. And and I'm not just one thing. And I never will be. I can't be just one thing. And so if I knew that thing that I was supposed to be and put all my effort into being the best at that, then maybe I could maybe I could have a clear vision of that. But I I don't. And I don't know how to. And I think that there are a lot of people, probably like me, that don't have a clear vision of what they are supposed to be. And a lot of a lot of our our motivational stuff is geared toward this idea of of becoming. And you're gonna become whether you want to or not. <laughs> right? you're going to grow and progress and, and you don't necessarily have to predict what it's going to be. Um, so I, I think you, you have to, to pick things that you, you want to achieve and you want to grow in, but I'm, I'm becoming less and less interested in that, in that portrait. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, it feels more like a portrait of Dorian Gray to me now um and i'm working a lot harder on the first part so maybe i don't understand uh maybe i don't understand the assignment that's possible uh but uh i i struggle with with this if i were to be honest well you know here's the thing and i think it's mainly because it has to do with a lot with the fact that when it comes to certain mainstream beliefs, um, it's a duality. It's either black and white. It's either white or it's black. It's either good or it's evil. It's one of those things. And when you have that mind concept, it's never that, it's never good. Um, you have to be able to see all the colors. You have to be able to see that. Because you can't see in between the lines 
if you can only see black and white. You can't see the grays. You can't see the the red yellows or the red oranges. You can't see the purple. You know, you can't see those colors. And when you were saying to become a, a perfect version of yourself, I don't believe there's any such creature that's perfect. Um, because our gods, our goddesses, they're not perfect. They screw up too. I mean, come on. The, the, the myths that we have of them, they screw up too. Every single one of them. There is not a myth in which each one of them does the exact perfect thing. None of them do. They all screw up. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. And why? Is it because it was told in the tale of a mortal? Maybe. But it's it's through our point of view because we are not perfect. And we're never going to be perfect. But what I think is what that um, divination meant, you know, accept who you are at this moment, but acknowledge who you want to become. You want to become a better version of yourself. And don't sit there and think, well, I've got to be a perfect version of myself. If you have that mentality, you'll never get there. Because we're never going to be perfect. We're never going to be perfect. You know, growing up, I thought in order to get my parents' attention and get my parents' affection, I had to be the perfect person. I had to be the perfect student. I had to be perfect at all this. And I knew I wasn't perfect. But everybody else saw that I, I saw the outside and saw that I was absolutely perfect at everything. I wasn't. And I got to the point where I hated to be called perfect because I wasn't perfect. Oh my God. I had so many flaws. People say, well, you always got everything done. Yeah, but I didn't get things done until the last minute. I mean, the very last minute. I would do, in high school, I would do my homework and homeroom. Right. That's when I got everything done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or, or, and this is, this is actually for real. My algebra homework. Mm -hmm. the night before I would do it during algebra class <laughs> I, would, I would do it during algebra class nice and I would turn it in right before I left and oh my god she would jump all over me her name was Miss Mills she used to jump all over me about that crap and I was one of the Actually, I was one of the best students she had, but she used to yeah. jump all over me about that because I never would do it. I just didn't want to do it. Right. And actually, I was one of the ways of trying to get the attention of my mom. Um, and, you know, stuff like that. The thing about it is, now that I've learned from that, I do want to try to be a better version of who I am. And it's, but I don't want to be a perfect version. Because if you're a perfect version of who you are, you become boring. You ever thought about that? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, think about it. If you give the perfect answer, if you are the perfect date, if you are, if you never screw up, you, you're you boring. You really are, at least to me you would be, because you never would be funny. <laughs> nothing would ever, never, nothing would ever get out of balance. Uh, nothing hilarious would ever happen to you. 
I mean, it would just be so dull. Well, I suppose that makes me very entertaining. <laughs> and nothing would cause you to change. Because you would be perfect. So why would you need to be able to change course on anything? What would you need to improve? And you would get bored yourself. So you're perfect. And therefore, it's time for you to die. And you would need, <laughs> didn't need no lessons to learn. <laughs> so what's the point of living? Fair enough. Well, there, I just argued the reason why you shouldn't be perfect. There you go. <laughs> well, I think I can live up to that. <sighs> well, I think it's fair to say right now just how we're doing. Uh, I'm I'm just thoroughly exhausted right now. I think whole last many months of of everything uh and holding energy in different directions. Um and and having that release uh happen. Uh even though the energy didn't necessarily accomplish what I wanted it to. Um, it's, it's on the other side of, of the purpose now, when you have to release it, you have to let it come back to you. And, you know, as we've talked about before, when, when you let energy go and you let it come back to you, it's not on a bungee cord. It doesn't just spring back. It, it kind of gets hauled back in. And, uh, in the meantime, you're, you're kind of tired and achy and stupid uh, while it's reconnecting with you. And that's really the mode that I'm in right now. Uh, I, uh, I find that I don't necessarily have a grand vision to apply my energy to right now. Uh, and I've got to just let it, let it reform. Uh, and hopefully during the, uh, yeah, we're coming up on downtime. We're moving into winter. And uh, maybe there will be a, a chance to reshape that and revitalize that. Uh, at least I'm hoping so. I'd hate for this to be my new lifestyle. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's kind of a good thing that it doesn't come like right back at you because, I mean, it would knock you on your ass, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably would. I mean, probably this big would. ball of energy is just go bam, <laughs> smack you into a wall like Wally e. Coyote. Right. Flatten you right back into that wall, smack you, bam. Well, then we have to. Uh, you know, I've I've had several readings uh, lately where the winter idea has come up. And you know now we're we're in a time where we really are actually moving into winter, and so it makes a little bit more sense. But every cycle, uh, everything that we do has that cycle of spring energy and summer energy and autumn energy and winter energy, and we like to skip the winter. Um, we we like to just jump straight from the harvest of the last thing to basically right in the middle of the next thing. So we're not too big on, on winter. We're not too big on spring. Uh, uh, and yet both of those are necessary. You have to have some patience for those seeds to, to germinate and, and begin to move. And, and after after uh, the the harvest of something that you do, you have to allow the energy to come back to you. You have to spend some time and 
and a little bit of silence in that particular area. Uh, I I think that that's that's really necessary. And so something that you're doing, even though it's summer outside, you may be in a winter for what it is that you've just done. And uh, if we don't allow ourselves to have that winter time, I don't think we fully recuperate from what we put out. And I also don't think we really understand what we just did. Yep. And with that, we are going to take a short break to listen to our amazing um, sponsors. And we will be right back with Witch Hat Chats. So stay tuned. Anybody can tell you what is on a tarot or oracle card. What matters is seeing beyond what others may not be able to see and help the client to uncover what lies in the mist. What do readings from Moonlight Potions and Charms do? Wednesday, I did this ancestor reading and it was an amazing reading. And it was a detailed reading. And I remember talking to this customer's ancestors and it was so delightful and he wanted some questions to be answered about the magic in his family because he didn't know and his family was mostly like most of our families are you know how everything is like hush hush when it comes to the magic in his family and he wanted to know who can he actually talk to about the history of the magic in his family and I was able to give him specifically who he can go to to talk to about that what particular deity he can actually go to to be able to help him with this and it was just an amazing reading and, and talking to his ancestors they were such a delight and they told me so much about this customer it was just an absolutely wonderful wonderful reading for him and i was just so happy to be able to give him this wonderful reading it's really amazing to be able to give people these readings these products that's really going to help them and be able to give back to the community because this is what moonlight posters and charms is about we want to help you to embrace the power of your own magic that is what we are all about is to help you to do that book now and allow our wonderful staff to take care of your spiritual reading needs. And there is so much more in our Wicked store to help you to embrace the power of your own magic. So come on in to Moonlight Potions and Charms at www.moonlightpotionscharms.com and discover the wicked things that ignite the magical passion in you. Have you heard? The King of the Crossroads, Papa Legba, has graciously opened the roads, paving the way for the Papa Legba Altar on the Go to be nominated as Outstanding Product of the Year in the 2024 Witchcraft and Occult Media Awards. Makes Papa Legba Altar on the Go stand out? Complete traveling altar kit. Everything you need for sacred space is right at your fingertips, all neatly arranged in a mystical painter's pail, and it's compact and convenient. A perfect, powerful, temporary altar, whether you're a modern nomad, a military soul on the moon, or a wonderless stricken traveler. It also has additional space for the personal touch. As customization is a key to your spiritual journey, the Papa Legba Altar on the Go leaves room for you to infuse your unique energy. Moonlight Potions and Charms and Papa Legba invites you to join the spellbinding spectacle at the 2024 Witchcraft and Occult Media Awards. Cast your vote for the Papa Legba on the Go as the outstanding product of the year. 
Your support fuels the magic. Go to https colon forward slash forward slash rb dot gy forward slash pc 3 f 11 to cast your vote. Remember, your altar is not just a space, it's a step in your magical journey. Explore the depths of your inner self by visiting Moonlight Potions and Charms at mpcmagic.com. Be ready to embrace the power of your own magic. Have you wondered what spirituality is? Spirituality is limitless as it does not contain any boundaries on beliefs or practices. Spirituality's most important component is personal experience and allows one to explore it freely. Every moon we rise is a spiritual moving tradition as our name is our lifestyle because we are persistently rising and moving forward. We realize that everyone's spiritual journey is extremely personal but more easily traveled with reinforcement. We'll teach you to become friends with your shadow, emerge your authentic self, and give you time and space to develop your own spirituality. And when situations bump back, you'll have the entire community behind you as we are a magical family who work to sustain each other. Discover the benefits of working within a society dedicated to helping you grow on your personal path. Visit us on our website, Linktree, or Facebook page and discover why we don't fit in the box. And welcome back to Witch Hat Chats. It is I, Soul Ravencraft. I am here with Miss Nikki Kirby here on Witch Hat Chats. Uh, now is the winter of our discontent. <laughs> Talk about getting past the the harvest uh, and moving into the winter. Now in Texas, oh, we yeah. don't experience winter on the same level as people experience it in other places. Uh, for example, today it's seventy five degrees outside. Yes. Um, <laughs> Which is is you know starting to to get to to be sweater weather there, um, and seventy five uh, degrees ain't sweater weather. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's seventy five degrees here. Where the, where the hell are you at? Oh, you're in Texas. Never mind. Yeah, and uh, you know uh, sometimes it's it's mild, uh, you know, but but we uh, uh, we'll we'll get some cold. Uh, yeah, we had that that big. Uh, ice storm that the hit and took out a lot of stuff a few years Probably ago. Oh, they turned Texas into a popsicle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of it is that our infrastructure is designed for heat because that's what we mostly have. Uh, I remember one time I was uh, on business in New York and um, the guy on the radio station was warning people uh, not to go outside if you could avoid it. It was going to be 85 degrees. It was starting to get extremely dangerous out there, and and don't don't risk it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, hell, when I was a kid, my dad made me mow the lawn when it was 105. Uh, <laughs> you know? um, this is this is very pleasant. Um, but if you think about it, a lot of uh, uh, the places there don't necessarily have the air conditioning or or the airflow in the same way that we have here. And so it is dangerous uh, because it's not designed for that. Same way down here, our roads are designed for heat. They're designed to to not melt and, <laughs> and to, uh, you know, to work in, in those kinds of conditions. So when we get when we get snow and ice, um, uh, you know, you it doesn't make sense to have a big army of sand trucks and and all of that for two days a year. 
you know? So the way that, that we handle that is we just kind of shut things down for a couple of days and, and um, uh, just, just let that happen. Uh, and, uh, but, but also along with that, the roads, the, the banks of the roads and that kind of thing are not designed for ice. Um, they're, they're, because we don't have it so much. And so they don't necessarily bank in the same way they do say, uh, you know, uh, up North, uh, and the, the road materials are different and, and aren't necessarily designed to provide the traction. And so even if you believe you know how to drive in this stuff, the road may not be what you're used to there, uh, and it may get you. Uh, and, you know, same thing up north with, with the heat. So, um, you know, we got we to gotta deal with where we are and who we are. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like um, when I lived down in California and I was vending, and um, they would tell me, be careful because it's raining cats and dogs outside. And so I walk outside and it's mist. And I'm like, really? I used to run when it was actually raining to the point where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And it was lightning. Sure. You know, you know they but, what they made us run as kids. In a, um, in a place like California where they don't get a lot of rain, something people don't think about is those residues of oils and chemicals. Right. Um, will will rise up in that little exactly. bit of rain. And that street gets super slick. And whereas in a place where rain was much more common, that stuff would constantly be moving and it wouldn't right. accumulate like that. Right. But when they say it was raining cats and dogs and I walk out and I can actually see and it's like <laughs> myths. Like, right. What the hell are they talking about? Raining cats and dogs, my ass, you know? Sure. <laughs> and sure. I, and I remember my first year there when it was, when it was misting and all the cars would stop and they would look up at the sky like, what's this wet stuff that's coming out of the sky here? I'm like, it's rain. It's just water. You can go, people. <laughs> you know, you can go, right? Yeah. But it's it just depends on where you're at and how people react to this stuff. Um, because like like you were saying, so I know how to drive in the snow and i know how to drive in the rain and i know how to drive in, in so many different different weather systems and the thing about it is you just need to number one don't lose your damn mind okay that's the first thing you don't need to lose and number two just use some common sense and drive kind of slow okay when you need to and speed the fuck up when you have to i'm sorry if the ground is coming out where you're at move your ass all right don't go, don't go slow move right. your ass okay or get the hell out of the car and run okay th 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 those are your two options you either move your ass in your car or you jump the fuck out of your car and run right. <laughs> just don't be the two options you have right this also brings up uh, another idea that, that we might think about. What if we quit picking on each other for being different? <laughs> oh, my God. What? An idea that has gone back, what, since we literally wrote the, what, the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> <laughs> what if we just let everybody be like they are, where they are? And and not try to, uh, I mean, we could we could enjoy those differences. <laughs> you no, know, that is so true. Um, actually, on CBS, they have honored, um, actually, what was it? The U.S. military has honored um, Harriet Tubman 
as a general for the military because she was the first female general for the um and people have to go and actually look because i don't remember the the details mm -hmm. but um because she had freed so many people because she had become a spy um she had filled so many different positions for the union army during the civil war they finally honored her as a general as a female general you know for the military um this past veterans day and i'm like good finally they start recognizing this um also they're beginning to honor um other um african americans that have actually fought in the revolutionary war mm -hmm. and were never mentioned and um so on and so on here's the thing i really do think that number one i'm very proud of my country because we are a melting pot that's what we are we're a melting pot of different cultures of um different ethnic backgrounds um different sexes different um viewpoints and i'm not talking about just political viewpoints i'm talking about cultural viewpoints um and i'm very proud of that because we don't need to have one viewpoint we need to have multiple viewpoints so that way we can be able to see things in different ways and different lights and right. pretty much that is what our forefathers thought about um and that's what i really enjoyed about when they wrote the constitution even though at the time they really didn't put that in precedent we're not going to go there right now um i can really get on my high horse about that um but it's it it has really this country right now what we're what we're in is in a precedent of trying to heal and we are trying to we what we really need to do is we need to start reaching across and trying to talk to that other person and even if that other person is being a dick and doesn't want to see our point of view we need to find commonality with that other person and start there and i know that's really hard oh my god but start with something simple you know something as simple as if you guys are sitting at a table and you both like uh green beans so hey i like these green beans they're cooked very well i like the salt on them or whatever whatever the hell you guys want to talk about that's something that's very simple that you can kind of build off of it doesn't have to be you guys don't have to agree on politics even though that would be nice um but you don't have to agree on that and you can kind of build on that because our country is so divided right now and i'm not really sure if we're going to even be uh, more healed in four years i'm hoping things will change but the thing about it is we cannot look to one person to heal our country whether we like this person or not we have to heal ourselves. We have to do it ourselves. It's like several of my mentors have taught me that you are part of the problem, but you're also part of the 
solution. So instead of coming to me with a problem, come to me with a solution and be part of that as well. And since we are magical people, let's come up with a solution. Let's come up with a solution of what we need to get done. So if we can find the source of our problem, okay, we found the source. This is the source. Now, let's see how we can undo that. What's the three ingredients of that problem? And let's see how we can resolve that. Anybody got any ideas? And don't say somebody's idea is stupid. All right. We don't need any more negativity put into this world. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and in a meeting, and I just said, we are just going to have a conversation, no negativity. And they say, okay, we're not going to have any politics talk. I said, no negativity, period, because I will leave. I don't care what it is. No negativity, period, because I am so sick of hearing it. And they're like, okay. And I think the entire country, one thing I'm glad about is that we have gotten this election over with because yeah. the whole the whole country was so stressed over this that even though if you liked it or if you didn't that energy just went on Wednesday and I, I felt this big sign of relief Wednesday and like I said whether you liked it or not that energy just went and I was kind of relieved that it was gone um I this is the second presidential election that has done this to me um and I'm not the type of person that gets involved in elections like this. Um, I kind of believe that, number one, you research who you want to vote for, because I do believe that you vote. Um, this is the, your way of hiring or firing, because voting is your right. Um, but I don't believe in telling people, you need to vote for this person or you need to vote for that person. I believe voting is something that is very sacred to you, just like any type of um, spiritual belief is sacred to you. This is how I believe. But it just seems like these presidential elections the last two times have gotten so ugly, um, has caused this country to divide among itself that these are not the elections that this country has ever had. Um, right. Because there was no really peace of transfer. Um, I don't really recognize my country hardly anymore. I feel like I'm in another country sometimes. And I think that's part of the stress that we all feel. So instead of saying, well, well, the government's got to get its act together and I can't do nothing about it. No, we are also part, make up that part of that government because we are the ones that vote the people in. And we need to take that responsibility. And I'm sorry, but if you're a U.S. citizen and you don't vote, you are just as responsible for this country and these people being put in as everybody else because you didn't get up off your ass and make a choice. Right. So everybody needs to get up and we need to 
heel together and start reaching across that table and saying, hey, my name is Nikki. I like the green beans. What do you think about them? Hey. Or I can't stand those green beans. Do you not like those green beans? Cool. We don't like those green beans. Let's just throw those green beans off the damn table and get something else. You like peas? Whatever it is. Yeah. And start to make things right. Because we cannot depend upon our elective officials to do all of that for us. We need to be able to do that for ourselves. And if we don't start doing that for ourselves and stop depending on our elected officials to do everything for us, then we're never going to get out of this slump. Hey. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> all for our show today. Well, something something I want to share uh, that I'm going to put in the uh, I'm going to put in the links. Um, one of the ways that I've been uh, getting out of my own head is there's a YouTube channel called Jolly. It's a guy named Josh and a guy named Ollie. They're from England, and they uh, they like to travel around and try different things. Uh, and, uh, so there's, there's them going to America and experiencing Bucky's and trying barbecue and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And then there's a series of videos where they're introducing British high schoolers to some of this stuff and getting their reaction. Um, and it's interesting because there are some things that they're trying to go, oh my gosh, we don't have anything like this. And then there are other things that they try that is just way over the top for them. Uh, for example, a lot of American food is really, really sweet by uh, by uh, other standards. Uh, we have a lot of we have sugar in everything. It's it's actually not a great thing. Um, but uh, it's oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> It's so much fun to to watch this, and it's it's interesting to see things that that you're familiar with through a different perspective. Uh, and you know, there's some things that I really agree with them on, and the, yeah, and it's that's probably a little a little over the top there. Um, but uh, I'm gonna put a link to their channel. They got a lot of fun videos where they where they do things. Uh, and uh, I especially like the one with the high school kids uh, because they uh, they're fairly unfiltered uh, and they uh, they you you can see uh, that you know they they haven't necessarily traveled or anything like that and so they're dealing with it really from their their own perspective so I'll, I'll put that in the links maybe there will be some fun in there for you all right. So that's all for our show today. So embrace your power, support your community, reach across that table, and keep your fuzzy babies, your family, your friends, and yourself safe, and have an absolute magical week. Mm -hmm.